Cheers now taking the helm for the great Dave Shoji for for Hawaii is she shows a lot of emotion when her team makes a play she's not so happy with you'll see it and when they make good plays there's that line shot we were talking about mixing and hitting with much more range for Lexi Sun. Several Hawaii fans in the UW field house. That was Brooke Van Sickle, 5'9", redshirt junior, out of Battleground, Washington. Uh, like Rasmussen, a transfer from the University of Oregon. And Hawaii is on the board first in this best three out of five set regional semifinal. That's going to be a net violation. Unfortunate break. Emmer, Amber IGD, I, I excuse me, 6'3", freshman out of Baton Rouge into the top of the net. And, Paul, that's really unusual. The Hawaii team's talked about how IGD has been eating those up off that tough serve from Yosia, a rare error where the ball is just sitting there waiting for her, that is IGD, to make a point off the overpass. Swing off the right side down through the block. And Brooke Van Sickle again registering a couple of early kills. Hawaii 26 and 3 overall, as mentioned, the number 12 seed. Nebraska the 5 seed. They finished tied for second. Three way tie with Minnesota and Penn State at 17 and 3, 27 and 4 overall. Jazz Sweet going high left side. And we talked about the balance now of Nebraska. She has been a revelation in this her junior year out of Topeka, Kansas. Last year she hit 205. This year she's hitting 282. Had 17 kills in the second round against Missouri. And Coach Cook said, look, she has to be huge. If we're going to make a run deep into this tournament, need Jazz Sweet to be big and in December she tends to rise to the occasion. Nebraska's road through the first round that they hosted in Lincoln beat Ball State three sets to none. A very good Missouri team that really battled the Cornhuskers three sets to one. Give you Hawaii's resume in just a moment. Beautifully controlled dig and off the edge of the block and down. Maddie Kubik as you mentioned Karch the Big Ten Freshman of the Year 6-3 out of West Des Moines, Iowa. And in the last match, we saw Holland Hands for A&M using those hands. That's a shot that Kubik has uh, mastered her, herself as hitting off that left side, which is often a smart thing to do because the bigger blockers in front of you are the middle blockers, not so much the, the wing defenders. Nice up by Sun. Pretty good bump set. Kubik's going to get an opportunity smartly off the top of the block. Nebraska ahead in the point. Or at least they were. What a good swing off the left side. McKenna Ross, who's mostly known for her ball control, 5'10 senior out of Aliso Viejo, California. That was a rip through the seam. There is Bailey Choi, 5'9", graduate transfer senior from Honolulu, but transferred from the University of Utah. Look at this, Lauren Stiverens hitting out on the left side. Lauren Stiverens, a returning All-American, probably hadn't done that since she was in high school. Look at this. We saw her training that yesterday. In we practice. did, and kind of scratched our heads then. <laughs> Baylor will take on the Washington Huskies, so it will be according to form, one versus eight tomorrow for a spot in the national semifinals. Congratulations to the Huskies. And Texas, we're being told, is down a set against Louisville over on ESPNU. Knuckles trying to get after that defensively, and the ball falls. Kenzie Knuckles, 5'8", freshman out of Yorktown, Indiana. The freshman libero for John Cook and the Cornhuskers. Best three out of five sets. First four sets to 25 points. You know, a couple surprises, Paul. It's, a lot of people felt like, uh, that Kentucky was playing some of the best volleyball in the nation. Washington taking them down. And then Texas at home losing the first set in this round of the regionals. Nice read by the libero for Hawaii Aquino. Good first contact off the block, block deflection. And again, really good swings in transition. And you pointed out Robin Amo, a three-time Olympian. Very emotional on the sideline. And another thing impressive about this Hawaii team, 
both their left sides in their current offense, which is very different than what they started the season with. But both Van Sickle and Ross were really recruited almost as DSs and as Liberos. And now here they are carrying a big offensive load. Props to um, Helvig and those two players. Everybody's been very flexible. They had to be after the injury to Rasmussen on September 12th. Hawaii showing you their trademark. They are really a good ball control team. Digging and of course first contact serve receive high flat and nice track chase that time by Matty Kubik but Nebraska unable to follow up and a really good start for the Hawaii Rainbow Wahines up seven to five. Both of these teams Karch look at the resumes both in the NCAA tournament for the 38th time 35th wow. regional for Nebraska. This is some real pedigree. Could see two blockers for Hawaii that time. IGD, the 6'3 freshman out of Louisiana. First team all Big West. Stuffing, a first team All American with some help from Van Sickle on the outside. Yeah, a lot of help. I think Van Sickle got most of the contact there, even though she is undersized at five foot nine. She puts up a very solid left side block. Nicklin Hames who last year made history becoming the first freshman ever to start at setter for Nebraska. Stiverings will go to the sideline and give way to number 43 defensive specialist Haley Densberger out of Malcolm Nebraska played 32 matches last year 16 aces on her stat card so far on the year. Tipped over the top. That ball was on the floor. Densberger arguing that it was up, but that is to no avail. We might have a challenge, though. Right in front of us, Karch, what would you think? I thought part of the ball touched, but, of course, that's in live time. Oh, yeah, that ball's yeah, on the floor. The touched. Yep. It's hard for the defender to know. She got her hand under the ball. She doesn't know what she can't feel. That part of the ball's on the floor. Yep, and notice who was hitting. Noreen Yosia. Uh, Yosia. What's impressive about her, Paula, she's my kind of old school player. When she's in the backcourt, she's a setter. When she's in the front court, she's a hitter. That's old school 6-2 offense. You very rarely see that, but the Hawaii team feels like they have to keep her on the floor. She's so valuable with her leadership and some of the other intangibles. The replay system, of course, in effect throughout the course of the season and into the tournament can challenge ball up or down which is what we're looking at right now foot fault on the service line and three meter line ball off the blocker or off a player a net violation or not and three meter line attack three challenges three times against Minnesota he was out of challenges in the second set exactly. against Minnesota and here we have Yosia at the line remember she brings her team so much one of the things we saw Nebraska practicing yesterday was watching out for this this serve, she brings a lot of heat, causes trouble. Perfect pass by Kubik. There's the high flat shot you were talking about, Karch. Quickly into the middle, and that's the second net violation. IGD may be just a little excited. We saw another freshman. Tiana Rush really struggle for Texas A&M in the first match. It's a big moment. Yeah, but IGD, that set was also too close. And when it is, IGD has to recognize it, stop her swing, and just keep the ball in play. Good tough serve from Hames. That is a good out-of-system set by Aquino, the libero, but missed out of bounds. Our first look at Hanna Hilvig, six foot two freshman out of Lidingö, Sweden. That is a suburb of Stockholm. Recruited by one of the great players of all time at the University of Hawaii, assistant coach Angelica Jungquist. Combination play off the block and out of bounds. There were six big hands that time in front of Van Sickle. Nebraska so well coached. They were not surprised by that combination play at all. A little bit of a lucky swing, but they had exactly the block that they wanted. There is Van Sickle. Hawaii continues to lead now by two. Nice pass by Knuckles. Oh, Alexi Sun showing some of that diversity of attack. Off speed up into the block. This was a noodle. Thumb down. 
Amo was not happy with her defense on this play. It's not, if you read it, it's not that difficult a play to make, but it was deceptive enough to keep the Libero Aquino off, off balance. Helvig, number 17 in black, ripping that ball inside the block and out of bounds. Hawaii, I gave you Nebraska's road. They beat Northern Colorado 3-1 and then beat an outstanding team, the University of San Diego. We thought San Diego should have been a seeded team. They beat them three sets to none. Very impressive. Yeah, University of San Diego, what a season they had. They won the WCC. They beat BYU twice, but BYU gets the seed. USD doesn't and has to go play on Hawaii's court for that second round match. So season recap for the Rainbow Wahine. Talked about their outstanding record both on the year and in conference. Nine newcomers, five freshmen, four transfers, and a couple of them playing a very big role. Nice read. Uh oh, that's tight. Sweet, just able to knuckle that ball over. You're not going to get Weak, weak sauce to the floor against Hawaii, and there was nothing weak about that. Jazz Sweet absolutely crushing that ball inside the block. Tell us and the difference between weak sauce and strong sauce. Well, weak sauce, <laughs> yeah, any ball that you put over softly with two hands, especially on the overpass, you got to bring some serious heat to end that play, but you also have to stay out of the net. Earlier we saw a Hawaii player net that ball set too tight really good adjustment by the freshman again she was the big west freshman of the year and getting that delivery from noreen yosia who was the mvp of the big west and remember that hawaii team had to make a major adjustment they were playing a unique system with no libro on the floor they were shuttling setters and middles early in the season before conference started and then rasmussen got injured and finally they started playing with their Libro, Rika Aquino, plus Coach Amo needed her to be more vocal. She felt like she was being too quiet in the early part of the year. Nothing quiet about Robin Amo, and what an international career she had. A member of the University of Hawaii Hall of Fame. Three-time Olympian, a silver medalist in 2008 in Beijing. Good touch by Hames. There's Aquino on defense. And that ball, was it off the block or into the antenna? Off the block. Yep, that is a really good swing once again by Yosia, 5'11 senior, able to put that ball away from Torrance, California. She's crafty. Remember, she sets in the backcourt, but now she is not the setter. They have two setters on the floor, and she's not performing the duties while she's in the front court. So she's going to be a right-side blocker. Expect Nebraska maybe to try and set at her set out that way, but no, they go the other way to Stiverance. Good block touch. Chance here out to Van Sickle and missed it just out of bounds. That ball just a little bit wide. Is Hawaii doing a really good job on the All-American Stiverance right now, or is that connection not quite what it should be? Well, we saw it in practice yesterday. I thought it was struggling a little. So, but in that case, I, thought, I actually thought that set was the right height, the right tempo, but there was a really good touch, what we call a soft block that neutralized the attack of Stiverin. Van Sickle again, undersized by a long way at five foot nine, and Hawaii off to a wonderful start here in Madison, leading 15-12 over Nebraska. As a maze for these two programs, the University of Hawaii and the University of Nebraska, Almost unparalleled, both into the NCAA tournament for the 38th time. See the number of national semifinals. This is the 39th tournament. It is only Stanford and Penn State that have been in each and every national championship. And between those two schools, 15 titles. Perfect pass by Kubik. That's the connection you're looking for. Lauren Stiverin, six foot four, redshirt junior out of Scottsdale, Arizona, first team All American last year, and have another wonderful season. This 11 kills on 24 swings against Missouri. Well, I sure like that route that Stiverin's ran. Remember, Van Sickle got a good touch on her before, so Stiverin's changed the route, stayed inside the sideline more. That is a beautiful response by GD. They really need the 6'3 freshman. 
She had a wonderful year, Karch. Look at the numbers. Two kills, hit 359, and was first team all Big West Conference. That is a wonderful get by Robin Amo out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Battling her own teammate for freshman in the year in the conference yep, with yep. Hannah Helvig. Helvig was first team as well. Oh, what a pass. Maddie Kubik. We'll talk about it throughout the course of the weekend, but she has to be one of the favorites for National Freshman of the Year. Speaking of freshmen, what a season. And the thing that's so impressive about Kubik is she stays on the court and she's a primary passer in almost every serve reception formation. So she's carrying a huge load in every phase of the game, unlike a more specialized player like a middle or a front row opposite. That ball falls, and now Nebraska back within one. It was 15-12, to 12, the Hawaii Rainbow Wahinis at the opening media timeout. Maddie Kubik, 6'3", freshman out of Iowa, was considered the number four overall prospect coming in. And she, as you pointed out, Karch has had a really, really strong all-around freshman year. A serve goes down for Nebraska. Aquino was making the strong chase. Rico Aquino, the libero for Hawaii, but give Nicklin Hames the ace. She had 24 coming in. 3 nothing run by Nebraska, tied at 16. Good read by Gide on that set that was too low. And Lexi Sun in transition, number 11 in white, six foot two junior out of Encinitas, California, began her career at the University of Texas. Weaker blocking target. Helvig is so impressive for the Wahini down the line, tied at 17. Has played some for the Swedish national team. She's got three kills on five swings, and this one, pressure against a good block. There is Van Sickle again. The transfer from Oregon was born in Hawaii before growing up in the state of Washington. Nice touch by Helvig. And going high flat. Yep, you got to change your trajectory a little. The two outside hitters, Van Sickle and Ross, are 5'9 and 5'10 respectively. And maybe even shorter than that. I'm, I'm not <laughs> sure. They're wearing That's three pairs listed. of socks. <laughs> but give Helvig huge props. That's her six foot two frame. And she gets on the floor. When you're not involved in the block, you have to crash toward the action. And she's the one who made that play possible for Hawaii. Jazz Sweet off to a very nice start. Four kills on seven swings. Both teams hot offensively. Hawaii hitting 367. Nebraska 346. As Sun goes back to the line, you can see how she's improved. First team, all Big Ten. Perfect pass again. Dug by Knuckles down the line. And Helvig... Hawaii was hitting some balls yesterday at practice, and you and I were sitting here going through our notes, and we heard this. <laughs> <laughs> There's a different sound There's a different when somebody sound. has that heavy arm. Shank pass. Oh, nice save by Hames. Legally saved on her side of that imaginary line. Helvig is in some really good spots as an off blocker. What a Great cover. cover. Up into the block, Callie Schwarzenbach at six foot five, the sophomore out of Kearney, Missouri, able to tap that ball down. Remember that play. Momentum block this time by Jazz Sweet. And watch Ross on that second one. She was purposefully trying to fling the ball into the block and get it back, but it bounced in an area where her team couldn't touch it. And Knuckles, number two in the off-color jersey, signifying the libero. Misses that, 20 to 19. Very tightly contested opening set. Bailey Choi back to serve. And remember, we haven't seen any of Rasmussen yet. They were 
had big hopes for her to carry a huge offensive load at the start of this season. Look at the quality of contact off to the block deflection. High flat shot. That is another really good swing. Was that Ross once again on the outside? It was indeed. Number 20 in black from Alyssa Viejo. And timeout called by Nebraska. Now trailing 21 to 19. And remember yesterday in Nebraska's press conference when the local press, uh, the local press from Lincoln, mind you, asked Coach Cook a number of questions about Hawaii. He said, look, they're going to play Hawaii volleyball just like they did under Hall of Famer Dave Shoji, who was their head coach from 1975 to 2017 up out to Stanford to close out and fulfill fill the bracket as to who will be in the national semifinals. Coming out of the timeout, got a nice matchup here. Maddie Kubik on the left against Yosia on the right. But instead they go to Stiverens, and that's playable off the scoreboard. Off the scoreboard legal as, the ball, as long as the ball stays on your side. Going away from the matchup you talked about, Jazz Sweet, as advertised. I've been following Nebraska's box scores. We had them earlier in the year against Purdue and Lincoln. She is must be, along with Lexi Sun, one of the most improved players in the Big Ten Conference. Yep. Hitting 280, still probably a little less consistent than she, than she and the Huskers would like her to be. But they need her to be huge in this tournament. Well, oh, that's going to be a back row setter. With Hawaii's system, their setters are always in the backcourt. And a ball that was passed just a little bit too tight. Tied at 21. Opening set. Best three out of five for a spot in the regional finals. And Hawaii calls timeout. Texas to five sets when they were hosting as well. Here is Megan Miller, defensive specialist on to serve. Tied at 21. Another good pass from Hawaii, though, leading to a easy kill because they can set the middle that's one of the that's the biggest reason why you want to have a pass that's not far from the net and in the middle of the court because you can set your middle and that's the set that happens fastest so it's the one with the least blockers in front of it and the most efficient both teams are passing serve very well nice block touch Hawaii ahead in the point. They're going to get a free ball. Oh, that was tough. Van Sickle right on the sideline. A little miscommunication. You're right. Yosia was running in. Stiverens right side goes off speed. Smart choice, but opportunities missed by Hawaii. Yeah, opportunities missed, especially the last time the ball was on Hawaii's side. They end up having to send over a free ball. Really like what Stimbridge did there. Middles don't always have to hit hard, and she took something off of it. That part of the court, the donut in the middle is going to be open on her slide swing. Van Sickle again off of Micklin Hames. You like that matchup? I sure do. Both the matchups, when you have Haynes up there, now it doesn't mean that Haynes is an awful blocker. It just means that she's shorter by a good six inches for, from Lauren Stiverns, the middle. So you want to attack that outside blocker who doesn't get as many stuff blocks as many good touches. Nice pass by Kubik. Lexi Sun ripping down the line, but Kubik off the net touch deflection. Maddie Kubik, number 10 in white, just was calm and beautiful pass. Tied at 23. Remember, got a win by two. And Kubik's been doing a lot of that all season long as a freshman. Here is Densberger. IGD able to tuck that ball down inside Schwarzenbach. So it'll be set point number one for IGD and the Rainbows. Coaches Cook and Reyes frustrated. Schwarzenbach, uh, Schwarzenbach all over that, but didn't get her hands across the net in time. And it'll be timeout Nebraska. Callie Schwarzenbach, I talked to her at practice yesterday. The 6'5 sophomore out of Missouri was all Big Ten freshman team last year. Attack a volleyball, Paul. You want to be able to spread your fingers and make a big, uh, as much surface area as you can on the ball. So Schwarzenbach not able to do that with the limitation on her on her thumb. And just to uh, bring it further with regard to Texas and Louisville, Louisville unseeded out of the ACC Texas, the number two overall seed. Set point, man, missed out of bounds. I'm surprised Hawaii 
decided to have Yosia serve from the other exactly. sideline instead of from where she's most comfortable, especially out of a timeout. I was looking for an area one. All of a sudden, she was over an area number five. I think I would have had her serve from the comfort zone. And now a poor pass. Chance for Nebraska. Good set. Given Lexi Sun, who goes high flat off the inside hand of the middle blocker. That was a wonderful set and swing. By the freshman, Maddie Kubik. She does everything for Nebraska. Yeah, yeah she's put everything or all around play on display in this opening set. Tight pass. And Kubik, but a net violation. Kubik with a dig, but Schwarzenbach with a net violation. Schwarzenbach wearing number 26, had 11 kills in a hard-fought win in Lincoln last week against Missouri. This has been an interesting rotation for Nebraska. They actually have their opposite, Jazz Sweet, helping pass a little, and she's left-handed, but get it hit on the left side. Here she comes. Oh, finding a small hole in the block. What an improved player, Jazz Sweet, a clutch kill now with half a dozen. She's leading the way offensively now for Nebraska. Huge, just the way Coach Cook said they needed. Set point number two. Helvig off the top of the block. And Lexi Sun cannot make the play defensively. How impressive is Helvig as an attacker against this big block? She just jumped right in front of Igidi to take that ball and free Igidi up to be the first option, the quick hitter. And here comes Rasmussen as a blocking sub. I don't know if they'll take her off on this, but she, they much they improved their left side block against Sweet. Don't set that way. Kubik is roofed by Helvig on the outside with some help from Skylar Williams. Set point number two for Hawaii. That's a big Hawaii block. Helvig's hands way across the net. Boy, really like this substitution from Robin Amo. Critical time. Take the opening set over the top of the block. Hawaii chasing. Sweet oh. again. What a dig. IGD down the line. Boy, Jazz Sweet again. What a gutsy and smart play by sophomore setter Nicklin Hames. That just got to go by feel. That's gut. Or maybe Jazz Sweet was out of gas. <laughs> and smart to do it that late in the rally. Defense Heyman had to take a swing. First one, cold. Set point again, for, and that'll do it. Van Sickle tried to go off speed out of the middle back. What a well-played opening set, but the number five seed Nebraska Cornhuskers come out on top, take it 29-27. Outstanding opening set between Hawaii and Nebraska here in Madison, Wisconsin. Welcome back to our coverage of the NCAA tournament. They, need, they get plenty of production from Sun and Kubik on the left side and Stivrens, but they need a right side threat and Sweet provided it in that first set. Do you remember last year and earlier in the year, Capri Davis, who's taken a leave of absence from the Nebraska Cornhuskers, would come in just to play in rotation number one, and then Jazz Sweet would come back on. Capri Davis not with the team. Jazz Sweet leading them 6 of 15. In the opening set, Nebraska hits 326 as a team. Hawaii 280. Lexi Sun was very solid as where four, four kills, seven swings, no errors. But they're showing how much trust they have in her. When Absolutely. Setter, Nicklin Haynes is in the right back. It means Sweet is in left front. That's where that's their, where they are right now. But sometimes they run Sweet all the way across the court. They have her sprint across and try to hit behind the setter. We'll see what, uh, but so far it's been working for them not to do that and leave Lexi Sun to hit behind the setter. Underway, that ball served out of bounds by Nicklin Hames, who might have made the play of the opening set. Remember the contact on two during that long rally? Both teams were playing spectacular defense. How thoughtful, taking care of business in her own hands. 
Hawaii champions of the Big West Conference in their 38th NCAA tournament. Remember, coming out of that timeout, Hawaii had Yosia not serve from that zone. Oops, somebody netted. Yeah, that's going to be a net violation. But talk about that underhand delivery from Nicklin Hames and the swing. Perfectly delivered set down the line by Lexi Sun. Five kills on eight swings. Yeah, look, you get to this level, Karch, rally scoring. The margins are wafer, wafer thin. It was wafers we ate at that Indian restaurant <laughs> last night, wasn't it? Good wafers. Yeah, a little onion kulcha and garlic naan. Good serve here by Lexi Sun. Again, first team all Big Ten. Maddie Kubik was freshman of the year. Lauren Stiverens was first team, along with Nicklin Hames. Yeah, Sun does a nice job with that serve. She hits it right down the line, and she jumps well and uses that jump and her length to hit the ball almost down over the net cord. 24 aces coming into this weekend's competition, the regional round of the NCAA tournament. Very good defender as well, almost two and a half digs per set. Jazz sweet again. Don't see a lot of left-handers. Is, is it an adjustment? I mean, they've been scouting Nebraska for a week. They know it's coming, but uh, sometimes as a blocker, a little difficult to get in front. So far, Jazz Sweet on fire for the Cornhuskers. Four years ago, the NCAA Volleyball Committee changed the format of the tournament. The top four seeds in the national bracket host. What an advantage, but something earned. Baylor, Texas, although Texas is in real trouble right now. Stanford Cardinal, they are the number three seed. And Wisconsin is number four. Nice block by number 25, Callie Schwarzenbach. That's a block Schwarzenbach missed near the end of the first set. That time shooting her hands across the net more quickly. She was in the right spot again. Great story you reminded me of from last year. The farmer next door to the 150 acres over there to the guy plowing the field over there. Said, well, there's, there's this kid that's six foot five and, and she's really darn good. You ought to take a look. Well, and Coach Cook loves to recruit kids of teachers coaches and farmers they all know a great work ethic thanks to the family and the, the way they're brought up and they just know in terms of uh, understand more about service to others and how to make it about the team instead of an individual Rasmussen is back on now for Hawaii trailing 6-1 to open the second set good touch by IGD that's a very nice swing. Now, remember, you can play the ball below the waist. Maddie Kubik, who's been doing a lot of things with her versatility, <laughs> that's a legal play and a rule change that was instituted several years ago. Yep, any part. little desperation. She was leaning left, and then the ball caromed off the block. That's all she had was a left foot. Rasmussen, we mentioned that Van Sickle, a transfer from Oregon, as was Rasmussen. And then that ball through the block and down and away from Rika Aquino, the 5-5 redshirt junior out of Honolulu, the outstanding Libero, wearing the white jersey for Hawaii. Hawaii, the 12 seed, Nebraska at number five. Nebraska has gone on the road. They have not hosted a regional the last two years. They were in Minnesota last year, beat Oregon, and the year before, at Kentucky, off the edge of the block and out of bounds. Nice swing by number 20, McKenna Ross. Ross and Van Sickle, so smart. They rarely have a height advantage, almost always at a disadvantage to the block. So they got to figure out other ways to get the ball. The rally terminated, and one of them is to hit that ball off those fingers. She'll probably aim for it there. Didn't need them. You know, the corner. you know who else is showing some good all-around volleyball? Is Amber Igidi, yeah. the middle blocker. Remember the dig she made in the opening set and then this bump set? That is some nice volleyball for the freshman. And remember the dig we looked at at about 23 all, 22-23 last week against Northern uh, Colorado? Yes, Northern yeah. Colorado in the first round. And they they could have lost that second set if, uh, first set if she didn't make that s that save and they did lose the second set so she saved them from going down 2-0 
Number three, five foot six sophomore out of Alexandria, Indiana, Megan Miller on to serve. Tight pass. Kubik is blocked. Helvig on the outside with some help in the middle from Skylar Williams. Haven't talked a lot about Williams. She had one big kill in the opening set. 6-1 junior out of Bellflower, California. Only played six matches last year. This year, first team all-conference. Huge improvement. Boy, both teams passing the ball very, very well. Aquino nice all over that. Oh, you got to set that ball. Both teams playing good volleyball, creating an offensive rebound, another swing. Yeah, earlier in the rally, Oregon had another touch at their disposal, but Rasmussen just, sorry, Oregon, I, I, I meant Hawaii they, had another touch. They, yeah, Oregon. formerly Oregon. <laughs> there exactly. you go. They've got there several go. players transferred from Oregon. But Rasmussen had another touch and, and could have set or hit or didn't use it. Good pass. Came right back. Nice cover. That's going to be a double contact, a little miscommunication. Remember, Rasmussen hasn't been out on the court for such a very, very long time. And this isn't the first injury. She had to sit out last year with back surgery. And talking to the medical staff at the University of Hawaii, they talked about historically she has had multiple, and I mean multiple, ankle sprains. And this one kept her out almost 10 full weeks of the season. Her final season of college volleyball, if I'm not mistaken. They list her as a redshirt junior, so she does hopefully have one more year. Missed 20 matches, so it is throwing her right into the deep end when you miss almost the whole regular season and your first action is in the NCAA tournament itself once you come back. Sun is stuffed. Nice reach by Williams. These two middle blockers, Williams along with IGD. Junior is Williams, freshman IGD. They are a nice combination. Yep, and if you have a choice and you're Lexi's son, you probably want to swing a little less at Williams and a little more at the right side blocker, Yasia. Off speed, Stiverens comes up a little bit short, and Hawaii right back in this opening, I should say second set after trailing, 6-1. If you're just joining us, Nebraska and Hawaii right to the wire, a little bit of overtime in the opening set. Nebraska needed three set points to close it out, 29-27. Shank pass by Kubik, a rare mistake by the freshman who's been super solid. 10-9. Timeout is called by Nebraska. We'll step aside. Hawaii, no way. They're going away. Semi-finals, December 17th, 7 and 9.30 Eastern Time on ESPN. The championship match on the 21st on ESPN2. Stanford, the defending national champions, Stanford and Nebraska have shared the last four, or have won the last four. Kentucky, my pick to make it to the national semifinals, has been eliminated by the Washington Huskies. Wisconsin has advanced. You see the schedule there. Baylor and Washington at 4 Eastern time tomorrow on ESPNU. Back in Madison, Paul Sunderland with three-time Olympic champion Karch Kira. Hawaii back within one. That ball might have been out of bounds. With Williams, a net violation to bail out the Huskers. Nebraska, some question marks, maybe some cracks in their confidence. They, I wouldn't say they struggled against Missouri, but they really had to work to pull out that match three sets to one last week. Missouri and that was beat, at home. Yeah, and they they were they had a lead. I think it was 24-20, and all of a sudden it evaporated in one of those sets. They ended up winning that, but didn't have as much of the killer instinct as they would normally want on a home court. Rasmussen off the edge of the block and down. You can see Coach Cook, Coach Reyes really frustrated. They were talking in the last time out about how often the Hawaii hitters hit crossbody. That is, if you're a right-handed hitter, you, 
you th your arm swing goes across your body and you hit it back in that case down the line they want their blockers to get in front of that more yeah there is coach reyes on the knee and john cook behind him in his 20th year at nebraska both very very frustrated right now and hawaii is playing beautifully rasmussen rips down the line but well out of bounds that's the same swing we were just talking about, and it was open. There was space, but missed it by a good three feet. You don't want to aim right at the sideline. Got to give yourself some margin for error. Aim two feet in. Out for 10 weeks, and then when she did play last week in Honolulu in the first two rounds, did not play. It was spot duty. And did not play a lot even then, so still shaking off the rust. And how do you stay fit after all that time with a lower leg injury? Lexi Sun tapping up into the block, and then IGD and Rasmussen. That's something where you just don't have a lot of continuity and playing time together. Well, remember in practice yesterday, we saw them working on that yes. for about 15 minutes. So I like the aggressiveness of IGD, but she took an easy play right out of the yep. lap of Rasmussen as off blocker. So that's the downside of having your blockers be really aggressive and come down and throw themselves all across the floor. Nebraska's lead is 13 to 10, working short. And that's going to be a net violation, either called on Schwarzenbach or Sweet. We might have a challenge. They're saying there was no net violation. Coach Reyes is asking. ...in the opening set. She's back up front wearing number 17 in black. You'll see it with a jump serve handled easily. Yeah, really nice pass by Kubik. And Rasmussen cuts that ball out of bounds. Tough decision as a coach, isn't it? Yeah, and Rasmussen's yep. going to come right back out, replaced by Brooke Van Sickle. Hawaii tried to go a little bigger, and Robin Amau, really, really good body language over on the sideline because they're still going to need Rasmussen. Yeah, we were both thinking the same thing. I love how they're showing some trust in Rasmussen, giving her some chances, but it is hard to click. Oh, some really some confusion on the Hawaii side. They don't have a right side blocker. They all stacked over here. What a break for Hawaii here as Kubik had an easy swing and missed it they well long. They still don't know where they need to, yeah, assistant need to go. Okay. Assistant coach for Hawaii. Well, let's see. How many matches? Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is the 30th match of the year, but sometimes a little refresher course isn't a bad idea. Van Sickle back to serve. Hawaii trailing one set to none and 14-12. And Schwarzenbach missed it out of bounds. That's where the cast on her thumb, she yeah. just cannot snap over the top of the ball. And it also means you can't spread and have five wide fingers to wrap around the ball for more control. Working on Lexi Sun, Van Sickle with the ace, and we're tied at 14. We saw an earlier ace down the line on Kubik. It, clearly, Hawaii likes that serve from what we call zone five to zone one. Expect that to happen again at Lexi Sun. Yep. 3 nothing run for Hawaii. Nice bump set to Jazz Sweet. Kubik going off speed. Nice choice getting McKenna Ross a little out of position. We're in number 20 in black for Hawaii. This is a nice adjustment by Kubik. Watch McKenna Ross is standing in a normal off blocker position, but she wasn't ready for it to come that sharply. Coach Amo really working the sideline. That ball off the top of the tape. That is a break for Hawaii as Igidi, the young middle blocker, will go back to serve. She has been really impressive. Shook off some early match nerves and, and really looks engaged. Good serve. Another ace against Lexi Sun. Engaged indeed. Yeah, she stays on the floor, but she's extending her arm and hitting it flat, giving it some, some zip, and that allows it to drift more. Another serve that causes trouble. Chance for Hawaii. They kept the ball on Yosia, and Helvig into the cross court, nicely dug. That's way outside the antenna, but nice what an up. angle by Sweet. What a read by Helvig. 
What a brilliant point on both sides of the net, ended by Matty Kubik. Going high, going hard, going flat. Yeah, we saw IGD jump in. You can see your lower left, Texas wins the third. They're still alive, down only two sets to one now. Texas pushed almost to the limit. They were pushed to five sets. The fifth set wasn't close. The fourth set wasn't close. Very good team from UC Santa Barbara last week. Rip down the line. McKenna Ross again. Ross hits only 173 on the season. She doesn't look like somebody who hits under a couple of bucks. That's the matchup they would want to use. And attack is going at Haynes, number one in white, the setter for Nebraska, the weaker blocker of that combination. Ross, if you're wondering, an outstanding passer. That's why she's such a vital part of this team. Nice swing again, McKenna Ross, getting herself out of the way as the off blocker, but then misses Long in transition. And Nebraska, one of their blockers, that's a strategy you could use when you know Hawaii's hitters are going to be aiming for your hands. You just pull them down and let the ball fly out of bounds. Tied at 17. First set was deuce as well. Perfect pass by Aquino. Oh, what a better block. Stuffed straight down by Stiverance. Wow. Stiverance all over this a little late developing and good help also from Lexi Sun the left side blocker that is a choice that Bailey Choi might want to have back the right side was pretty open moved Josia over on to the left stuff block on the outside by Lexi Sun of the two out going to be remaining after today that's a tough break for the Pac-10 that they're going to have to face each other in the regional semifinals. What do you think about Penn State and Cincinnati in the bottom half of that Stanford regional? Well, Penn State would have played Pittsburgh a third time. They played and split matches earlier in the season, but Cincinnati upsetting Pittsburgh. I would favor Penn State. Jordan Thompson having a great year with Cincinnati, but Coach Rose and... The Nittany Lions do a really nice job of preparing for opponents and shutting down the major offensive weapons across the net. Two outstanding sophomore middle blockers, Johnny Parker, yeah. a young setter who's outstanding, and then Kendall White at the Libero just sort of manning yeah. everything that happens in the backcourt. Yeah, Penn State is really solid again. Nice play and response by Skylar Williams out of the middle, but the Huskers have gone out to a 21 to 18 lead. McKenna Ross back to serve for Hawaii. And she last time up got an ace on Cubic down the line. I would expect her to go down this same sideline at Cubic. Better good pass that good time. response by Cubic and Lexi Sun going off speed. Nice pokey by Williams, the middle blocker. That was not a necessarily good. Didn't you think that set was too tight? Lexi Sun got on her horse, got on that ball. And she had a smaller blocker in front of her in Yosia. So she can take a few more chances with the height advantage and the jump advantage that she has. Nebraska with a comfortable lead here. Some separation at 22-18. Perfect pass. And Williams responds, but missed that ball over the sideline. Hawaii trying to get their middles going. They've got a lot of good passing to work with, but we saw the huge stuff from Stiverens earlier and then some hitting errors on a couple of those other attempts. Hawaii hitting negative here in the second set after being so solid in the first. Seven kills make it eight kills, eight errors. Now an error in volleyball statistics, you hit a ball out of bounds or you were blocked on your own side for a point. So now Hawaii is hitting zero in the second set. Eight kills, eight errors. 23 to 19, here's the Libero Aquino. Very easy serve and handled like it was. And Schwarzenbach on the slide. Set points now for Nebraska. 
Hawaii's going to have to regroup. They were right there in the opening set. Nebraska needed three set points to win it 29-27, but it has been all Nebraska here in the second. Ripped into the cross court. Nice dig by Knuckles and cannot be played. Right on top of the net. IGD was there making sure <laughs> if that ball <laughs> crossed the net by a centimeter, she was going to hammer that number three in black. But so that's an intimidating save. Absolutely. I was intimidated sitting over here. <laughs> is enough to make that ball fall. Set point number two. You'll see it. Noreen, you'll see a good jump serve back at the line. Ripped it down the line. Jazz Sweet is blocked by GD once again. Set point number three. Nebraska actually has four passes ready. Unusual. That's the respect they're showing the Yosia serve. Nice pass. Right on target to Knuckles and a better block by GD. Nebraska's got to call timeout here. That is three set points saved, and as I thought, Nebraska head coach John Cook is going to slow things down. Good job by Hawaii. Did I say the lead was comfortable? You, <laughs> no, no you've, ta lead. <laughs> you've taught me never to say that. No lead is comfortable. We've seen some of the most amazing comebacks. You saw that one 9-3 in the fifth game yeah, earlier yeah. this year. I think a &M. Florida and A&M Horns have done a tremendous job, as has Minnesota, as has Penn State, as has Nebraska, as has, of course, Wisconsin, and putting a lot of fans in the seats. We talked about Stanford, Utah. We haven't talked too much about Minnesota, Florida. Minnesota. Got their setter, Kylie Miller, back. She had been out for many more weeks than they had hoped. Came back, and her first match back fell down a quick 2-0 to Nebraska. Come storming back. There's another strange result. 15-3, they lose yeah, in the fifth. Yeah. But they're happy to have the setter. They plan to run a lot of the season. Oh, wow. How can you do that on set point? You cannot block the set. The pass was absolutely perfect. IGD has been wonderful, the 6'3 freshman out of Louisiana, but just a little too anxious. Easy play to call. Yep, you cannot, whoa, she's way, way over, over. Way, way over. Cannot take that ball away from the setter for Nebraska. You have to figure out a way to keep your hands on your own side of the net in that so situation. It took four set points, but Nebraska able to close it out. I won't say comfortable. Nebraska has a two sets to none lead. On home court three years ago, they beat Wisconsin on Wisconsin's court. Yes. This very court after falling down 2-0. That's going to help. And the more matches Stanford can get under its belt with these two regional matches, the more Plummer gets reintegrated after being out for a number of weeks. The two-time reigning national player of the year. As wonderful a player as Catherine Plummer is, and you talk about Dana Retke, and you talk about Stanford or Wisconsin or Nebraska or Hawaii, it's about balance. You have to have weapons right around the dial, and all three of those teams do. Texas does as well, yep. but they're really struggling so far today. It looks like they might be able to even this match at two sets apiece. And when you're talking balance, we saw a great exhibition of that earlier today. Wisconsin threats from all five of their primary weapons. Dana Retke was 14 of 21, no errors. Nebraska, the number five seed. Hawaii, the number 12 seed. Hawaii, 26 and three on the year. The champions of the Big West Conference, trailing two sets to none. You'll see. Uh, this is the first serve. We talked about Nebraska getting back to the NCAA national semis for the fifth time. Stanford did it consecutively from 1982 to 1987. UCLA, you're a proud Bruin, from 1988 to, to 1992. And Texas from 2012 when they won the national championship to 2016. That ball blocked out of the middle by Schwarzenbach and a slow start here once again for Hawaii. And Penn State falling just one short, but they did something even better, winning four times in a row, Penn State, 2007, 8, 9, and 10. I'm sure they'll be happy to take those four titles instead of the five semis. 
Good rip into the cross court, dug by Hames. Free ball coming, got to watch out for the scoreboard. Helvig again going high flat. You talked about the Nebraska block, and they have really keyed in. What a good save by Hames, not once early in the rally, but twice. Tough ball to dig. That ball did not have a lot of spin on it. Nice off speed. Boy, Lexi's son has really improved her variety of shot, and she can bring the heat as well. The way Hames makes that play, both of them, both Hames and Sweet, great touches on the ball. But the way Hames gets that is by getting really low. And Lexi Sun using this shot more effectively this season. That's why last year she hit about 195. This year, 273, almost 80 points higher. And it's because of smart shots like that. You don't need to swing your hardest to get a kill every time. And in fact, you shouldn't. You should mix in variety. Van Sickle up into the block. Oh, what a nice shot into the cross court. Both Van Sickle and Helvig got off to a really good start. That's why the first set was so competitive. Yeah, these teams are so fun to watch. They both play so hard. See bodies flying all over that rally, the one before this. There's a final thought on Lexi Sun after this particular point. Tough swing for a left-hander. Jazz sweep. Really good location to get Nebraska ahead in the point. Yeah, what a great swing for a lefty. Lexi Sun caught a piece of Okino. Ball going out of bounds. But Lexi Sun, you talked about her improvement, which is remarkable. But a reminder that she did that against Big Ten competition. Yeah. Best conference in the country by and, a lot. And remember also, she had to sit out for about eight months yep. in 2018 after she transferred from Texas. So it was a long time coming, and she was barely ready to join back into conference play in the 2018 Big Ten season. She got a full lead up to this season as a much healthier player. Hawaii misses out of bounds, and the Rainbow Wahine need a timeout against Nebraska here in the third. Welcome back once again to NCAA Women's College Volleyball. The tournament coming your way on ESPNU and ESPN3. Back with U.S. Olympic team head coach Karch Kirat. Nebraska, the number five seed on top of Hawaii, the number 12 seed. Two sets to none and 5-1 here in the third. And Lexi Sun has been absolutely superb. Hitting 5.33 so far on the early evening. Nice rip down the line. Nice up. What a save. Jazz sweet. And off the block and out of bounds. Aquino doing a wonderful job of knowing where you are in the court. And Haynes coming up with a shot down the line. I'm surprised that Nebraska has not adjusted. We're seeing so much line swing, both from McKenna Ross and from Brooke Van, Zick Van Sickle, the two left side hitters for Hawaii. Sweet again on the cover. Free ball coming. Hawaii needs to convert on all of these opportunities. Good soft touch by Kubik. And that's going to be a center line violation called against Nicklin Haynes. That's the problem with pushing your first defensive touch too close to the net. Nicklin Haynes is running from deep in the court by a sideline. And you see right there, good shot. Her foot under the net because her momentum, she's traveling 20 feet just to make that play. You have to give her five feet of cushion so she can so she can avoid going under the net and causing danger like that. Nice response by Hawaii. They were trailing 5-1 at the timeout, 3-0 run. A lot of times the officials like to ignore that call, but if there's player safety involved, and there was a Hawaii player in the proximity, so that's a good call. Got to make that call. Nice, nice dig by Knuckles. What a good read. And Hawaii right back at you. Van Sickle in the backcourt, but a wonderful swing by Matty Kubik. We'll update you on the numbers in the match. Sun leading the way with nine kills. Jazz Sweet with nine. Matty Kubik now with five, but doing it all. Van Sickle with ten kills for Hawaii. McKenna Ross with nine. Helvig has cooled off quite a bit. She had five kills in the opening set. Now with only six. Oh, 
Oh, that ball's on the sideline. What a good shot. Off speed once again by Kubik. Who you Paul, think, that's Karchin? more like a senior shot. Yeah, that is yeah. not a freshman yeah. shot, except if you're the Big Ten Freshman of the Year. What a smart play. You think she's the National Freshman of the Year? She, you know, when you do as much as she has done for her team in the Big Ten Conference, we just went through a few minutes ago how many teams they keep having in the regionals every year. I'd say she's the odds-on favorite. Playing six rotations, playing good defense, wonderful first contact, serve, receive. Hits for a good efficiency. Hits smart. Here is Cubic. Excuse me. This is uh, Knuckles. And a good touch by Cubic on the block to create a scoring chance. Working on Van Sickle, Nickel and Hames, but a block touch on the net is going to be called against Nebraska and the All-American Stiverens, number 26 in white. A break for Van Sickle and Hawaii. Bailey Choi, the transfer from the University of Utah on to serve. Utah and Stanford coming up later. That'll be on ESPNU and should be quite a contest. Overpass. And right on the sideline. Nice play by McKenna Ross. Johnny on the spot. And that's exactly where the Hawaii bench was signaling they want the serve to go so Nebraska now passing with two they pull Lexi Sun out actually they pull Jazz Sweet into the formation well, but they take Lexi Sun out of there after Hawaii targeted her nice hustle again by the Wahine oh, and oh. the ball drops a kill out of the back row underhanded by Bailey Choi Saw that her team was, or is that was that Van Sickle, saw that her team was in complete disarray and just shoveled that ball over to Nebraska, and they weren't ready. Well, you have the one touch. They had another touch, but that caught. That's a play that works in <laughs> club volleyball. That's not supposed to work against the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Smart serve, getting the ball on Jazz Sweet. Kubik ripping into the cross court. Nice dig. Nice cover. And cut shot. One good cut shot. Deserves another. Noreen. And she came in in the Baylor match. Helped turn that around. They didn't win, but they were down 2-0 and came back. Helped them turn it around against UC Santa Barbara last Saturday. And played some exceptional volleyball early in the yeah. season when Breon Butler was, with, was uh, out with an ankle injury. She had 11 kills in the lo losing effort at Stanford. Longhorns fortunate to have such depth at that position. Tied at eight. Here's Stiverens on the left again. And making a pretty good swing. I mean, Lauren Stiverens has a bright future. Maybe <laughs> on the Olympic team in due course. Maybe they're making her an opposite or an outside hitter. Going to tell them to start training her how to pass the ball. Wow, that is really <laughs> interesting. I think she's two for two on the left. Nebraska back on top by one. Miller on to serve. Good touch by Stiverens. Down the line, but into the antenna and out of bounds. You got to give Stiverns credit. She gets that first touch, but some of the stuff blocks she has earn extra points. Hitters avoiding her. In that case, Coach Cook giving her a lot of credit. He's been working with her and with Nicklin Hames a lot since January, trying to develop their leadership skills. So they're co-captains now. And you might remember when they were playing Minnesota in that Big Ten match, they, they went, go up 2-0. Minnesota then thrashes them in games three and four. And in the huddle before the fifth, Lauren Stiverns took over. No coaches were there and helped inspire them to a 15-3 fifth set win. Stiverns again ripping down the line. And yesterday, we were again at practice. And Lauren Stiverns was going through the paces and a very brisk and uh, challenging practice for Nebraska. And I said, you want another shot at Wisconsin? She just looked over at me and said, you're darn right I do. <laughs> but then, of course, realized that they said, you know, like, Hawaii is a great team. We got to think about of them course, first. Of course, of course. I just asked her if they wanted another shot yeah. at Wisconsin. <laughs> and if you're wondering, Wisconsin played the most difficult Big Ten schedule. It's unbalanced because there are 14 teams in the Big Ten. But they played all of the top teams. Penn State, Nebraska, Minnesota played them all twice and came out on top. 
18 and 2. And beat this very strong Husker team 3-0 both times. I wouldn't expect that to happen again if Huskers, if the Huskers go on to win today. And the two teams play a third time tomorrow. And of course, one of those was in Lincoln, Nebraska, a place where teams go to die. <laughs> Nebraska on top 12-10, up two sets to none. Here is Densberger. Well, Hawaii continues to pass very well. You'll see uh, again down the line. Give you a quick update from the Texas Regional. And we are going to play five. Louisville putting a huge scare into Texas, who again was right up against it last week against UC Santa Barbara. Had to go five to eliminate the Gauchos, who had a wonderful tournament. Jump serve coming from Yosia. Beautifully handled by Knuckles. Maybe a little too tight for Hames. Tight. Ball kept alive by Yosia, but another missed opportunity for Hawaii. Kenzie Knuckles, the freshman libero for Nebraska is doing an outstanding job. And it was really questionable for a period of time. She committed, like a lot of players do, she committed very young to Nebraska. Had some family struggles. She lost her dad when she was only 15. And Coach Cook was telling us yesterday that she completely fell off the map, stopped playing junior volleyball. And AWOL. He couldn't get in touch with her. And finally, she came to Lincoln. And Coach Cook met with Knuckles and said, look, we want you to come. We're still here for you. But if you don't want to play, you got to tell us. You got to tell us because we demand a lot here at Nebraska. Kenzie Knuckles recommitted. She's gone on and she started for at the Libero position for Nebraska. Yeah, he said, look, she's a great young woman. We don't want to give up on somebody like that. Those were exactly his words. Hawaii trailing by only one. Lexi Sun again. Lexi Sun, 11 kills on 17 swings, only one error. We've talked about it before. It's a personal preference, card. We call an error a ball hit out of bounds. I wish they didn't include blocks. It gives no credit to the block. It shouldn't be solely a hitting error. And that was her only one. Remember, she took one swing that wasn't as smart as many of the ones we've seen. She got stuffed. Knuckles with a dig right on target, but the timing not there to Jazz Sweet. Good play by Sun to cause trouble. She gets her team a free ball back. Hawaii continues just to be in great spots defensively, as is Nebraska. Hames with a dig. Jazz sweet into the cross court, but just out of bounds. Linesman right in front of us called it out. Remember, remember now, Nebraska only has one challenge remaining. And Coach Cook, he can't find two per set. But basically, if you're good with your challenges, you have an unlimited number. If you were going to change in college volleyball the current rule, because it's such a penalty, you're correcting you're correcting a mistake by the officials. And that's and what's yet, so frustrating yeah, to coaches. Yeah, and then you are penalized by having to burn a challenge to get, quote, the score right. It's rally scoring. Every missed call is a point for your opponent. Maybe a better solution, and I've, I haven't heard all the ideas out there, but I'm sure there are a lot of them, is maybe as you get one per set, but as long as you keep getting it right, you could you still have one available in that yeah. set. Yeah. I know there's a worry with all of the broadcast games there are now, probably over 100 in the course of a season, that these games can last too long with virtually unlimited challenges. Because some of them, we've seen, can take a really long time. Great cover by Hawaii. Aquino on the cover and on the dig. Rasmussen is back on. Still trying to shake off the rust. Boy, Hawaii and Nebraska dig a lot of balls. Good set in transition. Jazz sweep. Smart Wait. play. Smart play getting the ball on Hames. Mm -hmm. Momentum point for either team. Jolie Rasmussen out for 10 weeks. Just back in after suffering a severe, severe ankle sprain. You can see her left ankle and calf all bandaged and taped up. That was really a good swing, and Hawaii really had to have it. 
Yeah, and she's taking some more comfortable swings on the right than we saw her, her first swing on the left, late in the first set. So smart call by Coach Amo to now play her at the opposite position. And they pull back to within one, down 15-14. Easy play to call, double contact against Hames. That ball drifts just out of bounds. Looking at some of the defensive numbers, Hawaii has dug 48 balls. They're getting a lot of point scoring opportunities. We don't have the number, but they have got to get much more efficient at hitting and scoring in transition. Nebraska, they've got 38 digs in their column as Knuckles is back at the line. Tough serve going five to five. Free ball. No, look at that. We have a bump kill <laughs> by Van Sickle, and now a beautiful shot into the deep cross-court corner. That was McKenna Ross. And you're seeing the sand volleyball, the beach volleyball yeah. influence when you will have to put plays over like this. And if you haven't played much beach volleyball, you are going to get caught off guard. Really smart play by Ross. The Rainbow Wahine still very much welcome at the Outrigger Canoe Club. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> And anywhere sand volleyball is played. Good pass. Good pass by Sun. That's yeah, a tough play. Williams, hands off the net, deflected it away from her defenders. 17-15 is the Nebraska lead. The fifth set is underway in Austin, Texas. Louisville leading the number two seed Longhorns. Three to one right now. That's over on ESPNU. Third set here, Nebraska up two sets to none. Good serve by Miller. Nebraska's a good serving team. Knuckles. Boy, what a smart swing. McKenna Ross, we've talked about it. Brooke Van Sickle, 5'9". McKenna Ross, 5'10". And getting the job done off the edges. And the thing that made that play was McKenna Ross's first touch. It goes to her. She puts it high, gives herself time to get back off the net and get a proper distance approach toward the swing. Quebec, solid swing, solid block, but off the hands and out of bounds off of Williams. And Cubic will go back to serve. We'll update you on her number. Six kills on 26 swings. Offensively a little bit slower, but playing the all-around game. Van Sickle going in between the blockers and down there, definitely going after Nicklin Hames. Hames at five foot ten, the sophomore out of Maryville, Tennessee. Yeah, and on this move, Stiverens, you can see she dives to her left, thinking, and we've seen Van Sickle hit some of those sharp angles, so Stiverens was playing the odds and going for the sharp shot, opening up some seam to attack. Well, what a wow. That is a big time swing by Lexi Sun. 12 kills on 19 attempts, hitting, waiting for the computer to change. <laughs> I'll round it to about 585. It's getting awfully wow. close to wow. 600. Really impressive. Stiverens will come out. Densberger will come on to serve. No Libero on the floor right now for Nebraska leading 19-17. Comes at the tournament. Baylor and Washington have advanced. They'll play tomorrow. Wisconsin is in. Will it be Nebraska or Hawaii? Stanford, Utah, Penn State, Cincinnati still to come. Louisville up on Texas and then Minnesota and Florida and got word that Thayer Hall is also now available to play after missing the first couple of matches for the Florida Gators. That is good news. Nice rip between the blockers once again, Van Sickle. Rasmussen will come back on. Yeah, playing in the 6-2 offense as one of the two opposite hitters, playing for Helvi. Noreen Yosia, maybe the final chance for Hawaii with her back at the line. Remember back to the opening match? Really tight first set between Holland Hands, Texas A&M, and Wisconsin. Holland Hands missed a big serve there at the end. 
and eventually it turned into a sweep. Nicklin Hames back at the line. It's 21 to 18, Nebraska. Nice aggressive serve by Hames. And that's going to be a point missed on the coverage. I'm trying to remember whether or not Hawaii has a timeout left. Lexi son. Boy, did that have a good sound. And yet another shot in Sun's repertoire, and that time just high, hard wow. heat to the deep corner. Yep, Hawaii did have a timeout remaining. You can't take it with you. If they're see. Nebraska in the NCAA tournament for the 30, excuse me, into the regional for the 35th time, 38th tournament appearance. Trying to get back to their fifth straight national semifinal. Just two points. Just one point away. Jazz Sweet has been superb as well. Really a good start offensively. Jazz Sweet, like Lexi Sun, two of the most improved players in the Big Ten Conference. Match points for Nicklin Hames. How good has Hames been at the defensive end? Unguarded, nice kill into the cross court by Hawaii. Yep, Tiffany Westerberg came in. They wanted a little different look on offense, ran the slide for the first time. Match point number two. Why not to Lexi Sun? What a spectacular performance in the third round by first team all big